Kate, you've recently been talking about how much you dislike the name of this podcast. It's not just dislike. I, I really hate it, to be perfectly honest. And it's like, I hate every part of it, right? So like flywheel, I mean, that's an automotive part. So if someone's looking through podcasts and they see Flywheel Fridays, they're going to think it's a Friday podcast about cars. You may be shocked to learn, based off of everything you know about me, that I know nothing about cars and had no idea that a flywheel was a part of a car. What does a flywheel do? So I'm going to have to Google this now because I don't remember. A flywheel is a mechanical device which stores rotational energy. So it basically helps like the car move. Well, aren't we moving the conversation on federal IT? There, still a good title. It's a little, it's a little removed, Alex. Well, I'm feeling very attacked and uh, I think we should just cancel the show. Hi, welcome to Flywheel Fridays, keeping up with the federal IT news cycle, one conversation at a time. I'm Alexander Bulova, media producer for GovSkyO Media and Research. With me today are my wonderful co-hosts, deputy editor Kate Macri and staff writer researcher Sarah Seibert. Kate and Sarah, welcome to the show. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having us, Alex. Also, I would say keeping up with the federal IT conversation one car engine rotation at a time. I'd like to kick off this episode with a special announcement. After almost a year of podcasting and over 20 episodes, this will be our last Flywheel Friday. We've had a great time putting this show together and hope you've enjoyed a more conversational approach to federal IT. But don't be sad, because the conversation isn't going away. In fact, it's going to be better than ever. Kate, Sarah, and I will be kicking off 2023 with brand new seasons of GovCast, HelpCast, and CyberCast. We'll be taking lessons learned from Flywheel Fridays and introducing new segments and features to our main feed shows. It'll be everything you love about Flywheel Fridays, now published twice a week. We hope you'll join us as we continue to keep up with the federal IT news cycle with a new and improved format. Kate, Sarah, anything you want to say? Well, I joined Flywheel Fridays halfway into the year, and it's been great to be the next member of the show and participate in weekly banter with my awesome, amazing, cool, fun co-workers. Kate? It's been a great run, but I'm really looking forward to incorporating some of these great conversations and commentaries into our regular shows. I think it's really going to enhance uh, some of the great work we're doing on our other podcasts. So we hope to see you there. To celebrate 10 months of keeping the conversation turning, we wanted to highlight some of the top federal IT news stories from throughout the year, especially those you may have missed or forgotten. Kate, want to start us off? Sure. So some of the top Federal IT news stories from my end of things this year were the launch of the new DOD Chief Digital and AI Office in June with Craig Martell as the new Chief Digital and AI Officer for DOD. He comes from Lyft. And I think one of the compelling things about that story was that he joined for the mission, not necessarily because of the pay and the benefits, because, you know, We know that that's not necessarily better in government all the time, especially when you come from Silicon Valley. So I thought that was a really interesting story because it's also showing how DOD is planning to approach AI going forward and think about it more. They're trying to think about it more like a tech company. We'll see how successful they are, but that's going to be a fun story to continue watching in 2023. Other big story that just happened DOD finally released its zero trust strategy for the next five years. They've been leading up to that and teasing that all year. And that's really been on the forefront of the DOD community's mind since 
President Joe Biden's executive order on improving the nation's cybersecurity back in May 2021, which mandated federal agencies and government contractors as well adopt a zero trust approach to cybersecurity. So be on the lookout for more stories from us going into 2023 about how the DOD plans to implement zero trust. Another big story was the Thunderdome Zero Trust prototype over at DESA, which is supposed to be a prototype for basically all of the DOD information network. They are developing a Zero Trust prototype for their classified and unclassified networks. And that pilot with Booz Allen Hamilton is supposed to be done in January. So that's another big story from this year that will be continuing into 2023. Fun to look out for. And then I would say the final big thing that happened this year was the cyber incident reporting mandate passed by Congress, putting CISA in charge of collecting cyber incident reports from critical infrastructure companies and federal agencies. This is going to be a big deal because cyber attacks and ransomware have been at an all-time high. Ransomware payments exceeded $1 billion in the second half of 2021, which is insane, and it's not slowing down at all. So cyber incident reporting is going to be really helpful for basically the entire cybersecurity community as they try to get ahead of cyber attacks and also learn from them and strengthen cyber defenses. So that's going to be another developing story going into 2023 and something pretty big that came out this year. And that's pretty much it for me. Sarah? Thanks, Kate. Yeah, I don't think this is going to come as a surprise to anyone. I think I've tried to work the PACT Act into every single episode we've recorded since August. (laughs) Uh, But President Biden signed the PACT Act into law over the summer. Uh, The law will fund compensation and health services for over 3.5 million veterans who suffered military exposure during their time in service. And an update for you all, last month, VA Secretary Dennis McDonough said the agency processed 1.7 million veterans' claims in fiscal year 2022, breaking its record by 12% from the previous year and cutting the claims backlog to approximately 144,000 claims as of November 2022. To date, veterans have filed nearly 137,000 PACT Act claims, and VA will begin processing these on January 1st, 2023, so stay tuned for updates there. Speaking of the PACT Act, DAV's 2022 National Convention in Orlando came at the perfect time sandwiched in between the confirmation of VA Undersecretary for Health, Sharif Alnahal, and the passage of the PACT Act only a few days after the event. Onahal made his first appearance in August during the conference as VHA's chief to discuss his top goals. He's focused on continuing efforts to combat COVID-19, recruit and retain a healthcare workforce, modernize electronic health records, and promote health equity. Stay tuned for an upcoming health cast with the Undersecretary for status updates on his priorities. VA Secretary Dennis McDonough also spoke during the event, and we had the opportunity to chat with him one-on-one after his remarks. He explained that VA is focusing on hiring and automation to ensure veterans receive their benefits in a timely manner. McDonough noted that claims automation projects have had major successes and in some cases have cut processing times down from several months to several days. Moving forward, we should see updates around how VA is implementing these solutions, especially as the agency begins to process claims next month. Next on my list is the HIMSS conference in March 2022. The conference featured a range of topics, including change management, APIs, interoperability, synthetic data, and expanded telehealth to combat future health crises. My favorite part about the conference was our live podcast with leaders that attended and spoke at the event. Bryn Cole, Director of Design and Storytelling of VHA's Innovation Ecosystem, for example, discussed how her team is using human-centered design as the backbone of its Reimagining Veterans Healthcare Project, which aims to design solutions that address critical changes in customer and employee needs and expectations following the onset of COVID-19. HCD has really gained traction over the past year, especially as it relates to enhancing the customer experience across veteran services. 
Additionally, Amanda Purnell, Director of Data Analytics and Innovation at VA, joined me on HealthCast to explain how VA is leveraging synthetic data to improve decision-making without compromising patient privacy. VA is continuing to expand its use to improve veterans' health. Recently, VA has used synthetic data to support its suicide prevention efforts. And check out Dr. Purnell and Dr. Carolyn Clancy's contributed article on our site about this effort. Lastly, I'd like to highlight VA's Health and Benefits app, which just reached 1 million downloads, uh, the agency announced on November 28th. So this app enables fast, secure, on-demand access to healthcare and benefits veterans have earned. It centralizes VA services like claims and appeals, appointments, messaging providers, veterans crisis line, and more. Since launching in July 2021, veterans have exchanged more than 1 million secure messages with their healthcare providers and downloaded more than 3.3 million VA letters and documents. Check out John Borsler's recent GovCast to learn more about the progress of this app. Kate, is there anything you'd like to add? The other big story or event that happened with GovCIO Media and Research this year was our Women Tech Leaders event, which was in person for the first time at the International Spy Museum in July. Women tech leaders from across government and industry talked about some workforce issues facing women trying to get into the tech industry or government jobs and how to encourage and elevate women in those positions and basically create a pipeline for more women tech leaders to rise in government. And to further the conversation, FEVCIO Media and Research is launching the Women Tech Leaders Working Group, which is a private group, but any woman in tech and government can join. And we encourage you to reach out to us to join if you're interested. The first meeting is going to be on December 7th, and we have a great calendar of networking events and working group meetings scheduled for 2023. So hope to hear from you about that as well. All right. Thank you, Kate and Sarah. It's been an incredible year here at GovCIO Media and Research, and 2023 is going to be even better. Make sure to find us on GovCast, HealthCast, and CyberCast as we bring you new and improved coverage of federal IT every single week. We'll see you in the new year, but until then, that's all for Flywheel Fridays. If you enjoyed this episode and the series overall, subscribe to our other shows and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice. I'm Alexander Bolova. I'm Sarah Seibert. I'm Kate Bakri. And maybe, just maybe, the real Flywheel Fridays was the friends we made along the way. Cue the outro music. <laughs> True words were never said. Flywheel Fridays, along with GovCast, HealthCast, and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released weekly across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at govcio.com.